there everyone, this is Asa News and here are some of the latest news for you with me, Vanessa. Zorda's an worm that demoralizes accession into ASEAN is not something to be trifled with. While attending the Municipal Level Conference in Ailiu, the head of Timor Leste's Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Jorge Manuel de Araujo Serrano, said that during his term there is needed to have small transformation of a new paradigm for entrepreneurs to have idea in order to increase the national production. He also emphasized that Timor Leste's accession into the ASEAN is not something to be trifled with. He also added that the LA municipality also has the same potential as other municipalities. If all parties can produce, for sure, the economics at the base will be strong, such as the food sector, and there is no need to purchase from abroad. As we all know that we have been the member of the CPLP, and now we will join the ASEAN. Huge projects will be followed, and we need to get ready for that. I want in the next few months we need to consolidate and by the grace of the Lord, during the coming election, the political ambience can go on well and we all can do our work. We have been trusted by the people, but we have no clue what to do next. With any available chance, our task is to face the challenge. As the annexation is not something to be trifled with, we need to be cautious, otherwise we will face new invasion as there has been invasion of political militia. For sure there will be another invader for economy as well. I suppose Ali also can sense that and we cannot close doors to the foreign investors. How to consolidate the Chamber of Commerce and Industry municipalities level and to be actively participated in Timor Leste's economic activities with each own ability and willingness is the main purpose of the conference. A voting was held during the conference. Gonzalo Mendoza Sarmento was elected as a new head of Aleus Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Sarmento stated that the actual priority is to establish a proper office for Aileo CCITL branch so that it can start to compile and register all fixed and handy data of all enterprises in Aileo municipality, as well as to control and monitoring them, especially the economic activity of Aileo municipality. There were 83 participants that took part in the Aileo CCTL conference voting, one absent and a null vote. The voting was ended with B packet victory by gaining 63 votes and A packet left to lose with 19 votes. Japan awaits Timor Leste's government confirmation to send Timorese Young to work in Japan. After meeting with the Speaker of the House, Ambassador of Japan in Timor Leste, Kimura Tetsuyo, expresses readiness of the Japan government to take in Timorese workers but awaits the Timorese government's confirmation. With regards to people-to-people -people relations, uh, we are conducting a lot of the grassroots uh, project and uh, we would like to uh, start uh, with the technical intern uh, trainee program in Japan. It means that uh, we would like to invite young Timorese to Japan. Uh, they uh, can work in a, a Japanese uh, companies and get salaries while they acquire the technology and experiences in Japan to uh, contribute to the development of these countries. And uh, uh, we are uh, discussing with the government so that we can start with the program soon and uh, increase the number of young Timorese who can uh, come to Japan to uh, join this program. This is one of the example how we can would like to uh, strengthen the people to people relationship and uh, grassroots assistance. As being planned, there will be five Timorese young persons to be sent on the first phase of the program in order to work in Japan, especially in the agriculture area. Timorla celebrates the 22nd anniversary of the transformation of Valentil to the FFDTL. <laughs> The ceremony held at the FFTTL headquarters Fatua da Dili Timor Leste. The sequence of the ceremony as graduation force stop pays military homage to the President, Republic of the Democratic of Timor Leste, and Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, Jose Ramos Horta. In the speech, Jose Ramos Horta said the function of the FFTTL institution is to defend the country and to continue defending Timor Leste independence as well as freedom and its people's safety. Today speak about you all, officials, superiors, sergeants, soldiers, to all whom serves with whole heart. I wish, await and think that you have served this institution of FFTTL. In the past, you have done so much contributions bravely and to sacrifice for the country's freedom. 
in your hands, FFDTL, the constitutional mission is to defend this country, to fight against external aggregation or internal as well if it might happen. You may please go on defending the independence of this country and the freedom and safety of its people. What the most important for today is FFTTL has idea and knows its function and defend the institutional function to serve peace, democracy and a country of democratic rule of law. The special guest for the event was, he was in the Pacific Commander, Chief of Staff of the Portuguese Army, United States Rhode Island Deputy General, Darwin First Brigade Commander, Vietnamese Defense Attaché in Indonesia, and New Zealand Defense Attaché in Indonesia. At the ceremony, there was an international recognition award, homage to the heroes, declaration of promotion of order for the FFDTL General Chief of Staff, and the promotion of FFDTL members. The historical transformation of the Liberation Armed Guerrilla Force, Falentil, was done on February 2, 2001, to namely Timor-Leste Falentil Defense Force, or FFDTL. China reopening its borders gives boost to Thailand's travel industry. China officially reopened its borders after almost three long years and Thailand's tourism industry has welcomed the move after suffering an unprecedented setback due to a lack of Chinese tourists. It is expected that Chinese tourists will return faster with greater intensity than earlier anticipated. There has been estimation by the Thailand Chamber of Commerce in China that the number of Chinese travelers arriving in Thailand could potentially reach 10 million this year. So of course virtually everyone in the tourism industry is now optimistic that once group tours resume, the financial struggles that many experienced during the pandemic will finally improve. <laughs> The second day after China's optimized COVID-19 strategy took effect, Thai Deputy Prime Minister and Public Health Minister Anutin Charnvirakul and other senior officials welcomed the first group of Chinese tourists at the Suvarnabhumi airport with flowers and gifts. The Thai government is expecting 300,000 Chinese tourists arrivals in the first quarter of 2023. Indonesia's protest Koran burning outside Swedish embassy in Jakarta. Hundreds of Muslim protesters gathered outside the Swedish embassy in Indonesia's capital Jakarta to protest the burning of copy of the Quran by right-wing politician in Sweden. Protesters gathered behind barbed wire barricades and rows of police officers chanting banish the Swedish embassy and God is great. A few Swedish flags were ceremoniously burned. Several protesters called for Indonesia to severe all ties with Sweden. Secondly, we urge the Indonesian government to not just condemn this, but to also join boycotting everything Swedish, whether it be diplomatic relations, economic relations, bilateral relations, and defense, and so on. We want them severed as proof that Indonesia is a member of the United Nations. Don't forget, the UN on March 15, 2022, has declared that there should no longer be Islamophobia. The protest was the latest in a string of outcry from Islam-majority countries including Malaysia, Turkey and Jordan. Sweden and Finland applied to join NATO last year, but all 30 member states must approve their bids, including Turkey, who had said Sweden in particular must first take a clear stance against what it sees as terrorists, mainly Kurdish militants, and a group it blames for 2016 coup attempt. <laughs> Malaysia's Prime Minister meets Singapore counterpart for bilateral meeting. Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim met with his Singaporean counterpart, Lee Hsien Loong, on his first state visit to Singapore since taking the post in November. The two attended a welcome ceremony bilateral meeting, a signing ceremony in which agreements on green economy and technological cooperation were signed.
During an official lunch, Anwar delivers the keynote address in which he called for the further strengthening of Malaysian-Singaporean relations. He also met with Singaporean President Halima Yaqub and attended an orchid naming ceremony. Traditionally, Singapore has honored visiting heads of state by naming orchids after them. Anwar was appointed as Malaysia's 10th Prime Minister after a closely fought election in November 2022. NATO's chiefs are the South Korea to support for Ukraine. College of International Studies and former dean of NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg urged South Korea to increase military support to Ukraine, citing other countries that have changed their policy of not providing weapons to countries in conflict following Russia's invasion. I urge uh, uh, the Republic of Korea to uh, continue and to step up on on the specific issue of military support i would say that's at the end of the day a, a decision for you to make uh, but i will say that several nato allies who had as a policy never to export uh, uh, weapons to uh, to countries in conflict have changed that policy now if you don't want uh, autocracy and uh, and uh, to, 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 to win then they need weapons so that, 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 that's the that's the, that's the reality. At the Che Institute for Advanced Studies in Seoul, he thanked South Korea for its non-lethal aid to Ukraine, but urged it to do more, adding there is an urgent need for ammunition. Stoltenberg also met with Yoon and Defense Minister Lee jong soop who echoed calls for closer ties with NATO based on shared values, but did not publicly address calls for more military aid to Ukraine. Lloyd Austin visits South Korea to strengthen defense partnerships and regional stability. United States Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin visited in Seoul for meetings to strengthen defense partnership and regional stability. In a statement released, the United States Department of Defense said Austin will also visit the Philippines to continue efforts to strengthen the security environment in the region. The Biden administration has indicated its intention to deepen regional treaty alliances with South Korea, Japan, the Philippines, Australia, and Thailand for a free and open Indo-Pacific and to balance Chinese influence in the region. The United States Defense Secretary trip to South Korea and Philippines to strengthen defense bilateral. <laughs> United States authorities say Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin III departed a trip to South Korea and the Philippines is intended to strengthen defense partnerships and regional stability. The meeting comes just a week after the Austin and United States Secretary of the State, Anton Blinken, held the United States and Japan Security Consultative Committee meeting with Japanese Foreign Minister Hayashi Yoshimasa and Japanese Defense Minister Hamada Yasukatsu at the Department of State. The Department of Defense said the meetings are intended to strengthen United States military partnerships in the region and advance regional stability. The Biden administration has indicated its intention to deepen regional treaty alliances with Australia, Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, and Thailand for a free and Indo-Pacific that addresses security issues, trade matters, climate challenges, and balances Chinese influence in the region. China moves to boost investment in major domestic projects in 2023. In an interview with China Central Television, Tsang Jianmin, deputy head of the investment department of the NDRC, said that the investment to be made this year will focus on 102 major projects for the 14th five-year plan period intended to enhance major infrastructure construction of transportation, energy supply, and hydropower generation. The investment will also go to areas of social undertakings and people's livelihood improvement. The official said that in 2023, the NDRC will further promote the construction of projects of policy-backed and development-oriented financial tools that started in 2022 and encourage private capital to participate in the construction of major projects in order to make more tangible progress. The construction period of these projects is three to five years on average. As 2022 was the first year of construction of the projects, we will see much tangible progress made this year. The investment in the projects will not only benefit the current economic development and stabilize growth, but will also lay a foundation for mid- and long-term development of the economy. And that's the end for today's episode. Have a nice and lovely weekend. Stay safe and stay healthy. See you soon.